the James Webb Space Telescope is upsetting the apple cart. All of a sudden, we realize that we may have to rewrite all the textbooks about the beginning of the universe. It's simple to imagine everything that will ever exist in space, or at least in our solar system, is already there. As far as we can tell, everything in space is quite old, so the concept of something brand new appearing there seems highly improbable. However, the opposite is true, as it continues to take the most astoundingly precise photographs of the cosmos ever seen by mankind. The James Webb Space Telescope has generated quite a stir across the world. The thing about science is that this is exactly how it should be, and that we should welcome rather than reject new information. In spite of this warm reception to new information, some of what the telescope is seeing is still very puzzling and perplexing. What have scientists observed from the James Webb Space Telescope that has them baffled? What mysteries about the start of time as we know it has the telescope so far unlocked? Let's find out. Recently, NASA, the European Space Agency, ESA, and the Canadian Space Agency, CSA, teamed up to give astronomers around the world the greatest gift they've ever received, a chance to catch a peek of the past at the creation of the universe and the edge of time itself. The James Webb Telescope, dubbed the premier observatory of the next decade, one of the greatest scientific achievements of our time, opened this otherworldly window into creation rather than a philosophical theory a mystical time machine, or an artistic metaphor. On December 25, 2021, this massive infrared telescope, more commonly known as Webb, was launched into orbit with the goal of taking pictures of the unknown and unlocking the mysteries of our hidden cosmos. The cutting-edge infrared detection equipment that Webb is outfitted with will enhance the unique perspective of the universe that Hubble has given humanity and reveal the hidden universe to our eyes. From its vantage point in low Earth orbit, Hubble has taken a number of never-before-seen pictures of the remote regions and historic periods of our universe, examining the history and evolution of galaxies, stars, and nebulae, and describing the characteristics of black holes, exoplanets, and the accelerated expansion of our universe. This groundbreaking discovery won the Nobel Physics Prize in 2011. Webb is the next phase in our collective adventure of discovering secrets of the universe and searching for life beyond Earth. Hubble's pictures have defined modern astronomy, opened our eyes to what lies beyond, and catalyzed our existential curiosity. In the words of NASA, we need to see farther and deeper. Webb can see back to the beginning of time, but Hubble can only go as far as 500 million years after the Big Bang. How is that even possible? The most recent space telescope has a number of advantages over earlier missions. Its size is the first thing that stands out. JWST has a 6.5-meter mirror made up of 18 gold-plated hexagonal parts. This behemoth can record light from objects six times faster than the 2.4-meter lens of the Hubble Space Telescope because it can gather more than six times as much light. The true game-changer, though, is JWST's sensitivity to infrared light. The Space Telescope can see wavelengths between 0.6 to 28.5 micrometers, spanning the mid-infrared to the red end of the visible spectrum. While the majority of Hubble's sensitivity is focused on visible light, its optics are tailored to record radiation from 0.09 micrometers in the ultraviolet to 2.5 micrometers in the near-infrared. Astronomers can observe galaxies that formed fewer than a billion years after the Big Bang by using the infrared spectrum. These far-off objects produce visible and ultraviolet light, but due to the expansion of the universe, this radiation is now emitted at longer infrared wavelengths. The only method to observe these young galaxies close to Earth is to go into the infrared. This also applies to newly formed stars. Infant suns are enveloped in dust, which scatters visible light, obscuring what is inside our sight, but primarily allowing infrared energy to get through. Infrared radiation is invisible to humans. The JWST image's hues, therefore, differ from what the human eye would perceive. In order to simulate how the eye sees, scientists frequently map longer infrared wavelengths to the red end of the visible spectrum and shorter wavelengths toward the blue. 
but occasionally, this pattern is changed to highlight particulars in a more illuminating way. JWS is an all-purpose observatory. Despite its emphasis on far-off galaxies and star formation, its strong infrared eye can discern features in solar system objects that are out of view for regular telescopes. Studying cloud belts on the gas and ice giant planets, monitoring cloud formations on Titan, Saturn's largest moon, investigating Pluto's atmosphere, and probing many of the smaller asteroids and trans-Neptunian objects that are found throughout the outer solar system are just a few of the early findings. When NASA's Double Asteroid Redirection Test, DART, collided with the asteroid moonlet Dimorphos, JWST even caught a glimpse of it. The space agency was able to examine the object's ability to influence the course of potentially dangerous asteroids that could cross Earth's path because of the impact's modest alteration of the object's orbit around its parent body, Didymos. Over 5,000 known exoplanets in our galaxy are still unknown, despite the fact that planetary scientists are working to uncover the myriad enticing secrets of our solar system. The majority of additional information is beyond the scope of Earth-based telescopes. Even Hubble, however, we normally know their orbits and frequently their sizes and masses. However, J.D. Duest has already begun to alter the current situation. JWST wasn't built to find exoplanets, but it has now identified one around the red dwarf star LHS 475, which is 41 light years away from Earth in the constellation Octans. The new space telescope was necessary to confirm the tiny brightness dip brought on by the planet transiting the star's disk, which NASA's transiting exoplanet survey satellite, TESS, had suggested might be present. The planet's diameter is only 1% smaller than Earth's, giving it the appearance of being rocky. But that's where the similarity ends. It boasts a temperature a few hundred degrees warmer than Earth and orbits its sun in just two days. But JWST's greatest power lies in its capacity to study exoplanet atmospheres. The telescope must use its potent spectrographs to observe transits in order to do this. Some wavelengths of the starlight are filtered out by a planet's atmosphere as it travels between Earth and its host star. Astronomers can investigate the chemical composition of these worlds because each atom and molecule has a unique spectral fingerprint. The majority of compounds that exoplanet researchers are interested in are found in the infrared region of the spectrum. J. Duddy Est will sate scientists' appetites while Hubble may tease them with its observations. WASP-39b, a hot gas giant planet circling a sun-like star 700 light-years away in the constellation Virgo, was the observatory's first exoplanet target. Water, sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide, sodium, potassium, and, for the first time ever in any exoplanet, carbon dioxide were all discovered by JWST's exceptional resolution. It is not a runaway greenhouse effect that causes the planet to glow at 1,650 degrees Fahrenheit, but rather the fact that it is only 7.27 million kilometers from its star. Mercury, in contrast, orbits the Sun at a distance of about 57.9 million kilometers. The gas and dust-rich stellar incubators known as nebulae are where planets and their host stars all begin to develop. However, despite their beauty, these clouds hide the essential actions taking place inside, at least from the outside world's view. The infrared vision of JWST has begun to reveal these habitats. The Eagle Nebula, M16, which Hubble made famous in 1995 and is located in the constellation Serpens, was one of its initial targets. On Time Magazine's choice of the top 100 images of all time, the dramatic Pillars of Creation photograph was included. This famous star-forming area is about 6,500 light-years away from Earth and was seen in an equally breathtaking manner by JWST. Whereas Hubble mostly observed opaque dust and frigid gas, JWS discovered several stars that had already broken free of their natal cocoons. The majority of these brand new stars may be seen outside the shadowy pillars and are identifiable by their diffraction spikes in images captured by reflecting telescopes like JWS. These young suns have had enough time to start nuclear fusion in their core and develop into mature stars. But JWS found even more recently discovered objects called protostars that were still absorbing gas and dust from their environs. These juvenile ones spew material jets from time to time, which strike their dense environment and cause them to radiate. 
The intense red glows that appear close to the tips of the two lower pillars are the best examples. The protostars are thought to be only a few hundred thousand years old, according to astronomers. Of course, star formation occurs throughout the universe, and JWST scientists are eager to investigate its varied manifestations outside of our galaxy. Within our local group are two important locations, the two most massive satellite galaxies of the Milky Way, the Large and Small Magellanic Clouds, are crucial to understanding the universe. This is due to the fact that the two galaxies appear to have about half the quantity of metals, elements heavier than helium produced by big stars, as the Milky Way. These circumstances resemble those that prevailed when the universe was only two or three billion years old and galaxies were producing stars at a maximum rate. The galaxies at that moment, and the galaxies we see now, were formed by the explosions during this so-called cosmic noon. The Tarantula Nebula, NGC 2070, which is located in the Big Cloud, is the closest object in the Magellanic Clouds to reflecting these chaotic times. The Tarantula, the greatest star-forming zone in the immediate universe, creates stars at a furious rate. Approximately 820,000 stars have been catalogued by astronomers to date and the enormous hydrogen and helium reserves the nebula holds should be sufficient for hundreds of thousands more. Numerous stars weighing at least 100 solar masses are contained in the bright star cluster R136, which is located near its core. Incomparable detail of the tarantula is revealed in the JWST's initial observations. In the middle part of the nebula, a sizable bubble has been cleared out by the intense radiation and stellar winds of the big stars in R136. Only the densest neighboring locations, which probably contain baby stars of their own, can withstand this assault. The Tarantula Nebula provides astronomers with a close-up perspective of the conditions they would encounter as they further investigate the cosmic midday because it is only 160,000 light-years away from Earth or a mere stone's throw on a cosmic scale. Many times, observations of nearby things help scientists understand farther ones more clearly. Just as star formation in the Magellanic Clouds offers light on analogous locations in the far reaches of the universe, planets in our solar system contribute to the research of exoplanets. Similar to this, research on interacting galaxies directly contributes to our understanding of the tumultuous beginnings of the cosmos. The JWS was built to directly study ancient galaxies formed at the start of the cosmos, and scientists have enjoyed testing this capability. However, neighboring regions can frequently serve as analogs for older, more distant environments. A deep field image of the galaxy cluster SMAX 0723 in the southern constellation Volans was one of Webb's first pictures, as well as the first one to be made available to the public. The exposure, which took 12.5 hours as opposed to weeks for Hubble's different deep fields, captures galaxies that are even fainter and farther away than what Hubble could see. SMAX 0723 is visible as it was only 4.6 billion years ago. We can see galaxies that were present within a billion years of the Big Bang, though, because of the cluster's enormous mass, which functions as a gravitational lens to magnify and distort anything behind it. The smallest galaxies in the field are located furthest away as one might anticipate. It's interesting to note that they don't resemble the more developed spiral and elliptical galaxies that are closer to our planet. The two furthest galaxies ever observed, however, may be the most important discovery to date. Scientists discovered two island universes that existed barely 450 million and 350 million years after the Big Bang, 13.8 billion years ago using the huge galaxy cluster Abel 2744 in Sculptor as a gravitational lens. The galaxies appear to be unusually brilliant and most likely barely 100 million years after the Big Bang did they begin to form. Researchers don't yet know if the galaxies include a large number of dim stars or a few exceptionally bright population three stars, which are thought to be the first stars in the universe and were huge stars made only of hydrogen and helium. On the other hand, the imaging of a collection of galaxies that are only 600 million years old from the start of the universe is one of the most recent findings made by the James Webb Telescope. Even if this truth isn't particularly fascinating in and of itself, the circumstances under which it occurs are proving to be revolutionary. 
Since we know where the cosmos came from, we can literally point our telescopes in that direction and witness events that occurred billions of years ago when their light eventually reaches us. By doing just that, the James Webb Telescope has just discovered enormous galaxies that are 600 million years or less from the beginning of the universe itself. However, we are not yet certain how they arose. It's not that there are galaxies, it's that they are massive. As it stands, these galaxies are much too large for any process we are aware of that would have allowed them to form in such a short period of time. We have seen smaller galaxies closer to the beginning, around 300 million years ago. There are a few monsters that mature quickly, although the majority of galaxies in this age are still young and just gradually getting bigger with time. It is uncertain why this is the case or how this would function. Some people refer to enormous galaxies as universe breakers, although it's more likely that we simply don't understand how something could have grown this big so quickly. But it's extremely likely that some scientific theories that have long been accepted as absolute truths will be challenged by these disclosures. Is that a mistake? In no way. In fact, that is one of the primary motivations for the telescope's launch. What more will Webb discover? Only the universe knows at this point. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.